ओके बेटा महा वी वर कम्प्लीटिंग दिस क्वेश्चन एंड दिस वॉज द नजमूल टी कंपनी क्वेश्चन इफ यू रिमेम्बर वी डेड इन द लास्ट क्लास एंड बेटा वी वर डन विद कैलकुलेटिंग डिप्रिसिएशन फॉर द ईयर and we also solve the second requirement that was relating to gain or loss on disposal and we need to make general entries we are done with that and the third requirement is that we need to make the machinery account so beta whenever examiner says you need to prepare the machinery account this means we need to prepare the cost account for machinery okay what do we need to do beta we need to prepare the cost account sir and how to make the cost account let's see this is the beta format for making cost account and i am writing heading as machine account what we need to do we need to make machine account so beta machine account alam it means uh, it is a account for cost of the machine okay machine account means cost of the machine now beta machine is debit in nature so beta we need to make this machinery account and machinery beta is an asset so balance brought down always comes on the debit side balance bd would always comes on the debit side now beta we need to prepare the machine account for what date the date is june 17 is year end so therefore the year must have been started on after june comes july so the year must have been started on 1st july 2016 now the question arises that sir how many machines are there uh, sir beta uh, last year closing would be opening this year yes June two thousand sixteen closing inventory would become first July opening. So, beta opening uh, for cost was thirty thousand. Okay, so we had machinery worth thirty thousand at start of the year. And what was the break off of that machinery, beta? Let's see. Uh, at the start of the year, we basically had uh, two machines. I guess machine A and B. Yes, machine A had cost how much, beta? Fifteen thousand and machine we had cost fifteen thousand as well. So the total of the two machines was thirty thousand at the start of it. Now the question arises, sir, have we bought any new machine in this year? Yes. But if the year is ending on June seventeen, then year must have been started on July sixteen. Okay. So from July till June, it is the current year, and as you can see, we have bought the machine uh, during the year that is on thirty April two thousand seventeen. Okay. So we'll be making entry on 30th April 2017. Whenever we buy new machine, beta, the entry would be machine would be debited, and bank would be credited. Now it is written note all sales and purchases were made by check. So it's a default assumption if the examiner doesn't says that we have bought the machine on credit, we would always assume that we have bought the machine on through check. So the entry would be machine would be debited and bank would be credited. And sir, what is the cost of the new machine that we have bought? The cost is beta twenty thousand sterling. So previously beta we had machines worth thirty thousand uh, sterling, and now we have twenty thousand dollar dollar or sterling. It means the same thing. We have twenty thousand worth of machines. So the total in total we have fifty thousand sterling of machine, fifty thousand pounds. So let's balance this. And the sir, have we sold any machine this year? Yes. But whenever we sell the machine, we transfer that uh, original cost into a special account known as disposal account. Okay, and the disposal account will not contain the actual amount that we have received here, but the original cost of the machine. So, beta, we have sold machine A for how much? We have sold it for eleven thousand five hundred. But still, what was the original cost of that machine, beta? Original cost was fifteen thousand. So instead of writing Eleven thousand five hundred. I'll be writing the original cost in disposal. Okay, so we will write the original cost of the machine that we have disposed of. And what is the date of disposal? If we can see, but a date of selling the machine was thirty first December two thousand sixteen. Now the question here arises: uh, Is thirty first December current year? Yes. Why? Because but the year is started on July sixteen, and we have sold the machine on December sixteen. So December sixteen would fall in this year, okay. So this is the disposal, and better the value that is remaining at the end of the year would be known as balance CD, balance carried down. So let us balance this T account now, and let's see better whichever is the biggest side. 
obviously machine is an asset and asset is always debit in nature so we need to add up both of these values 30 plus 20 beta 50,000 and we need to deduct 15,000 from 50,000 in order to find the carrying value okay sorry it's not the carrying value it is closing balance for the cost so the year is basically ending on what date 30th june 2017 so this is the year from july to june and this balance carried down beta would becomes balance brought down at the start of next period and after june would comes july again july 17 okay so this is known as balance brought down so balance brought down beta it's opening balance and balance carried down is closing balance and balance cd always comes before the totals and balance bd always comes after the total okay so this means beta this 35000 is included in this 50000 calculation but this 35000 is not included in this 50 this is other than 50000 so if we uh, write 35000 above the total the answer would be wrong okay so this is beta we make a non current asset account either it's the machine account or it's a building account or motor vehicles the account would remain the same balance bd always comes on the debit side because it's an asset and balance cd would comes on the opposite side that is credit whenever we have bought a machine so uh, or motor vehicle whatever it is we will be debiting the non current asset and the reference would always be bank so what happens if the examiner says that we have bought the machine from maybe uh, some xyz engineering so instead of writing bank we would write xyz engineering because that xyz supplier uh, would be our supplier account it would be our liability so machine would be debited and the name of the supplier would be credited and whenever we have sold a machine beta or any non-current asset that the cost original cost of the asset would be transferred to where it would be transferred to disposal account okay it would be transferred to disposal account and this is beta how we solve the uh, non-current asset account yeah. so beta in the next requirement what in, we do need to find beta in the next requirement we need to make the disposal account i guess we have already made the disposal account in the last class if you remember we have already made the disposal account so let us see this is was the disposal account there were basically four entries in the disposal if you remember the first entry was the original cost of the machine that we have disposed of the second entry was the total depreciation till date that was provision for depreciation the third entry was for the bank okay so the uh, amount that we have received on disposal and the last entry was for gain or loss statement of comprehensive income okay so let us do another requirement in this question and another requirement that is normally tested in this topic is how to make provision for depreciation account okay let's see how to make provision for depreciation account now provision for depreciation beta also known as accumulated depreciation what is it provision for depreciation beta means the total depreciation till date of the asset that we have sold sorry of the total assets that we have the total depreciation till date so this is the provision account and beta if you remember uh, correctly provision is always credit in nature okay so what is the nature for provision account provision is always credit in nature so the balance bd would always comes on the credit side but if balance brought down is coming on the credit side then the balance cd must always come on the opposite side and that is debit side this is balance cd okay so beta whenever we buy sorry whenever we chart depreciation in any particular year so the entry would be income statement would be debited and the provision account would be credited so we would write income statement and sometimes your examiner also writes depreciation instead of income statement so let's be on the safe side and write depreciation in the bracket okay so this is basically better the depreciation of the current year that will be charged to statement of profit and loss also known as uh, other comprehensive income or income statement pnl profit and loss so this is the current year's depreciation this was the opening depreciation this is current year so with a current year depreciation would increase the provision account and whenever we have sold one of the asset then the total depreciation till date beta would be transferred to where it would be transferred to a disposal account 
okay so the provision account is basically credit in nature but whenever we need to close the provision account it would be debited so the entry would be provision would be debited and disposal account would be credited okay so but this is the way how we make the provision for depreciation account Let's just complete the format and then plug in the values this balance carried down beta at the end of the year would becomes balance brought down at the start of next accounting period okay let's see beta how to complete this account if you are making the account for june 17 then the year must have been started on 1st july 2016 okay so the total depreciation that we are going to take would be the opening now as you can see beta 30th june 2016 data is already given the provision for depreciation at the end of the last year would becomes start of this year okay so the total provision that we had in the question was forty five hundred dollar now sir what was the depreciation this year have we made the calculation yes we are done with the calculation in the previous lesson and uh, as we can see we have charged the depreciation how much uh, for all three machines if we see the total depreciation that we have charged total depreciation for 17 was how much it was better four five six seven yes it was four five six seven so what would be the entry that we are going to make better this year for total depreciation entry would be income statement or depreciation would be debited and the provision account would be created it was four five six seven okay so better the opening provision that we had was how much 4500 and this year we charge further depreciation for five six seven so what about this disposal better disposal what does this disposal account contains so disposal account contains the total depreciation of the asset that we have disposed of this year so sir have we already done are we already done with the calculation of gain or loss on disposal yes we are already done as you can see beta we have charged depreciation for machine a for two years for the first year we charge depreciation on the original cost that was three thousand and the second year we charge the depreciation for six months based on the book value so the total depreciation till date was how much it was 4200 if you remember when we made the disposal account and entries this was the total depreciation that need to be transferred to where disposal account so the total depreciation for machine a for lifetime was only 4200 so this 4200 beta would be transferred to where a disposal account okay this 4200 and the remaining value would be balance cd now let's total this and find the balance cd so the opening provision that we had was 4500 okay and this year how much depreciation beta we chart it was 4567 okay so the total depreciation was how much beta it was 9067 so the 9067 is the total and if we deduct 4200 from that we are left with remaining value and that is 4867 so 4867 beta is the balance cd and this balance cd now as you can see the totals are obviously matched 9067 and this balance cd 4867 would become balance brought down at the start of next accounting period now let us enter the dates beta first july is opening and the year is ending on what date it's 30th june 2017 and the disposal uh, date is what on what date we have sold the asset if you can see beta clearly we have sold the asset on 31st december 16 so as far as disposal is concerned we would be writing the date 31st december 2016 this is the disposal date and this uh, 30th june after 30th june would comes 1st july 2017 and this would becomes a balance brought down okay but so this is how we make provision for depreciation account okay now there are some other requirements as well in this topic and that are how to make sir income statement extract and sofp extract so if the examiner asks us to make an income statement or statement of profit and loss extract let's see how we do that i am putting the heading statement of profit and loss statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income this is the basically uh, terminology that the examiner use other comprehensive income okay so this is the heading 
सो इफ यू रिमेम्बर बेटा करेक्टली हाउ वी मेक एन इनकम स्टेटमेंट स्टेटमेंट ऑफ प्रॉफिट एंड लॉस वी यूजली स्टार्ट विद सेल्स देन वी हैव कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स देन वी हैव ग्रॉस प्रॉफिट देन वी हैव एड अदर इनकम देन वी हैव एक्सपेंसिस सो इन दिस केस बेटा वी वुड बी स्टार्टिंग विद ग्रॉस प्रॉफिट वाई बिकॉज वी आर नॉट कंसर्न विद रेवेन्यू एंड कॉस्ट ऑफ सेल्स हेल्प वी आर जस्ट कंसर्न विद ग्रॉस प्रॉफिट Now, as you can see, but a gross profit figure is normally not given in such questions, and it's not given here as well in this question. So we would be uh, keeping this blank, and we would be writing x x, okay, in front of gross profit. After gross profit, but a comes add other income. Now, what do we have, but a in other incomes? In this topic, particularly in depreciation, in other income there can be only one thing, and it can be. Uh, gain on disposal okay it can be gain on disposal of non current asset and whenever beta there is a gain on disposal it would comes under the heading of other income and then sir what about uh, expenses there can be two expenses in this topic and it can be one is loss on disposal beta if there is a gain on disposal it must be reported under where it would be reported under other income okay and it's a loss on disposal it would be reported under expenses category and there is another heading that is depreciation expense and depreciation is always charged as an expense so this is the format beta if you want to make other comprehensive income or income statement extract in this topic that is uh, depreciation now uh, we have sold this asset sir uh, have are we uh, having gain on this disposal or loss it was basically a gain and how did we computed gain beta so we took as we started off with the cost of the asset and we depreciated the asset for one and a half year one year in 2016 and half year in 17 so the total carrying value also known as net book value was 10800 at the time of disposal and we sold the uh, asset for how much 11500 so beta if we are selling the asset for more than its carrying value then it's a gain and if we are selling the asset for less than its carrying value then it must be a loss now as you can see beta it's a gain in this question so gain must always be reported under what under other income so the 700 beta gain would be reported under other income after other income we have expenses we do not have any loss on disposal if instead we had loss on disposal a uh, loss is said to have occurred beta when we sell the asset for less than its book value less than its carrying value then it must be a loss and the loss would be reported where uh, under the heading of expenses then we have a depreciation as you can see we have already calculated total depreciation this year and this was how much 4567 so the better total depreciation 4567 would be reported under the heading of expenses so this is beta how we make income statement extract after income statement extract Ah, uh, there can be one more requirement in this topic, and that is we are revising all of the requirements in this particular topic. Ah, uh, there can be SOFP extract. SOFP stand for beta statement of financial position extract. Statement of financial position extract, also known as balance sheet previously, but the newer name is statement of financial position. So why are we writing extract in front of income statement and SOFP? because beta we are not making the complete income statement sfp we are just making uh, the non current assets column okay we are just concerned with non current assets so if we make sfp if you remember we make in usually in three columns okay usually in three columns so write the dollar or sterling sign at the top so we will be starting with the heading of non current assets now beta this is the same as we have already been provided last year but the values would be different as you can see beta this sfp extract is already given this is for the last year and what we need to do we need to make for the current year if the question requires so we have only one asset and that is beta machinery we have only one asset and that is machinery so beta there is machinery now the question here arises sir how many uh, machinery are we left with as you can see beta we have already made the machinery account now it's very easy to prepare this uh, sfp extract 
बेटा वी हैड मशीन ए एंड बी एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द ईयर ओके ए वॉज फॉर फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड द कॉस्ट ऑफ मशीन ए एंड फॉर मशीन बी द कॉस्ट वॉज फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड एज वेल सो द टोटल मशीनरी दैट वी हैड एट स्टार्ट ऑफ द ईयर वॉज थर्टी थाउजेंड बेटा दिस ईयर वी बॉट अ न्यू मशीनरी दैट वॉज मशीन सी फॉर ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड Now the total machines is A B C now uh, combined uh, collectively cost fifty thousand. But what happened this year? Beta, we sold one of the old machine that was machine A, and the original cost for machine A was fifteen thousand. Now we are left with only two machines, sir. That is uh, B and C. Okay. So machine B had cost fifteen thousand and machine C twenty thousand. So the total B and C cost is now thirty five thousand. Okay. So this would be balance C D, and this would be taken over to the SFP that is thirty five thousand. Okay, thirty five thousand. We make the these columns. One is cost. Second is beta provision for depreciation, also known as accumulated depreciation. Okay, and third is beta carrying value. Carrying value, also known as net book value. Carrying value. So I'm making the same format that is being given in the question. Okay, so let's see, beta. What is the cost? Let's leave one line. Okay, so beta machinery cost is how much? Machinery cost that is left that is thirty five thousand. Now, sir, what is the total provision for depreciation? Now, let us see this with the help of the provision account that we made in the previous class. Uh, sorry, in the previous slide. So, beta, uh, the provision that we had at the start of the year was how much? It was forty five hundred. This year we charge further depreciation. That was four five six seven. Now the total depreciation till date is beta how much? It is nine zero six seven. Okay, total depreciation is nine zero six seven. And out of that beta we have to deduct forty two hundred. Why? Because once we have sold the asset, the total depreciation of the asset that is no longer is use is no uh, longer useful for us. So therefore, we would be getting rid of that value, and we were needing to be transfer that to disposal account. Now the balance that is left over is four eight six seven, and this is the balance CD, and this would be carried forward to the next year four eight six seven. So four eight six seven would be better total depreciation at the end of the year. So if we did a cost and provision for depreciation, the remaining value would be known as net book value. Now let's just deduct. Cost from provision in order to find the net book value, carrying value. It is three zero one double three. Okay, carrying value is how much? Three zero one double three. So, but this is how we prepare the SOFP extract. So, I guess we are done with all of the uh, requirements that are particularly tested in that. And sometimes the examiner also asks for journal entry for what? Journal entry for depreciation. Okay. So, if the examiner is asking for journal entry for depreciation, how to make journal entry for depreciation, beta? Uh, so, the entry would be income statement debit or statement of profit and loss debit, and we can also write depreciation in the bracket. Why? Because this is the depreciation for current year. We are going to debit the depreciation or income statement, and we going to credit the provision for depreciation account. Why is uh, income statement being debited, beta? Because it's an expense, and the nature for expense is always debit. And why is the provision being credited? Because provision is a contra asset; it is always credited. Now, as you can see, beta, in this year, uh, how much depreciation we charge? We found found out in the previous class for machine A, B, and C. All the total depreciation was beta four, five, six, seven. So the entry would be income statement or depreciation would be debited. And the provision account would be credited, okay. And what would be the entry if we buy a, an asset? The entry would be beta asset account would be debited, okay. So we have bought machine C here, so machine account would be debited. We can write machine C in the bracket, and we need to credit the bank. But instead, if we have not yet paid the amount, instead of writing bank, we would be writing trade payables, okay, or just payables. So this is how we make the general entry when we buy an asset, and for how much we bought this machine C? If you can see in the question, we bought machine C for better twenty thousand sterling. So the entry would be asset would be debited and trade payable would be credited. And then the examiner asks, sir, uh, which accounting concepts are being applied on the charging of depreciation? 
सो बेसिकली बेटा देर आर थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट दैट कैन बी अप्लाइड हेयर एज फार एज डिप्रिशिएशन इज कंसर्न एंड द फर्स्ट ऑफ दैट इज मैचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट ऑल्सो प्रीवियसली नोन एज एक्रूवल्स कॉन्सेप्ट सर वॉट इज मैचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट मैचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट बेटा स्टेट दैट इनकम एंड एक्सपेंसिस शुड बी मैच फॉर द सेम अकाउंटिंग पीरियड एंड वॉट इज दिस मीन फॉर एग्जाम्पल बेटा इफ वी हैव बॉट एन एयर कंडीशनर फॉर मे बी वन थाउजेंड डॉलर्स ओके एयर कंडीशनर इज फॉर वन थाउजेंड डॉलर्स ओके एंड दिस एयर कंडीशनर वुड बेनिफिट अस फॉर मे बी फोर ईयर्स सो इंस्टेड ऑफ चार्जिंग द एंटायर थाउजेंड डॉलर इन द एक्सपेंस वी वुड मेक दिस थाउजेंड डॉलर एज अ एसेट ओके वी वुड बी ट्रीटिंग दैट एज अ नॉन करेंट एसेट थाउजेंड डॉलर्स and uh, if we are using the asset for maybe 4 years so let us assume there is a straight line depreciation and there is no residual value scrap value so therefore out of this 1000 dollar 250 dollar depreciation should be charged each year okay so each year we are going to make the entry depreciation debit or income statement debit and provision for depreciation account credit by 250 okay so every year the depreciation uh, gets a uh, A charge in the income statement, and this will reduce the book value. So, in the first year, the depreciation would be cost would be thousand, and provision would be two fifty, and the carrying value would be seven fifty. Second year, cost would again remain thousand, but the provision is now five hundred. Why? Because two fifty for first year and two fifty for second year, and the book value carrying value would be five hundred. The third year, the provision would further increase by two fifty, and the carrying value is now only thousand minus seven fifty. That is two fifty, and in the last year, cost would be thousand, and the provision would also be thousand. So the carrying value would be zero. Okay, and then we would uh, scrap the asset. So matching concept basically says that if we are benefiting from the use of the asset for the more than one year, so the cost of that particular asset shall also be charged for more than one year. So this is income and expenses should be matched. Okay. so if income is being booked for 4 years then the expense should also be booked for 4 years so the second concept beta that is usually being applied here is prudence concept what is prudence means beta prudence means uh, to uh, exercise caution to exercise caution while preparing accounts prudent approach means cautious approach or a very uh, informed approach and uh, how is prudence being applied prudence says that one must never overstate its profits and assets so beta if we are not charging depreciation as you may be aware that depreciation is an is an expense so if we are not charging depreciation beta this means uh, we are overstating our expenses and uh, uh, sorry we are understating the expenses and if the expenses would go down and if the expenses would go down so therefore our profit for the year would be overstated so if we are not charging uh, the income statement with the depreciation of air conditioner that we have used every year by 250 dollars so if we are not charging depreciation expense then the profit would be overstated so it would be against prudence and if we are not charging depreciation the sop as well so we would assume that the air conditioner would cost 1000 dollar uh, uh, each year so because of the use of the asset beta the non current asset would lose its value each year by 250 but if we aren't charging depreciation we are assuming that asset is still worth 1000 dollar which is not true because the asset loses value every year uh, with the usage so this is prudence and prudence says that do not overstate profit and assets then beta the third method that we are uh, sorry the third accounting costs concept that is applicable here is consistency concept sir and what does consistency concept states consistency concept beta states that uh, any method that you use should be applied consistently from one year to the next so sir what happens if we keep changing the method every year if we keep changing the method every year beta so therefore it would be inconsistent and due to that a comparison between years would be difficult okay it would be very difficult to compare from one year to the next so this means beta uh, we should be consistent one should be consistent while charging depreciation each year so this is how consistency concept is applied acha consistency concept uh, also states that 
if we have three class of assets maybe one is building or furniture second is motor vehicles and third are loose tools if we have three separate class of assets we can apply straight line method on the building and furniture and we can apply reducing balance method on computers or maybe motor vehicles and we can apply revaluation method on loose tools okay this is per perfectly acceptable and this is not against the consistency concept why because consistency concept beta states that whatever method you select you should apply that method consistently on uh, the entire class of assets so it's not necessary to charge single depreciation method to all class of assets but it is necessary that whatever method you choose shall be applicable to all the assets that are in particular class and one should not change the depreciation method every year okay so this is what uh, consistency is about so one more thing beta lastly uh, the examiner asked that sir which type of uh, depreciation method is applicable on which type of asset so beta if any assets have uh, let's suppose uh, permanent nature although uh, all non current assets are permanent nature but some assets are more permanent as compared to other so if assets are permanent nature and if the assets have long life okay and we do not change those assets very often so example our building okay there is a building and there is furniture or fixture so for these asset furniture fixture and building uh, the optimum or the best method to apply is straight line method okay straight line method beta also known as equal installment method why because if we are using the asset equally each year so therefore beta the depreciation should also be charged equally each year but sir if the assets are uh, technological in nature okay if the assets are tech based technological in nature so for any assets that usually get outdated easily or quickly okay so the if the assets got usually outdated example it's motor vehicles there are new models coming in every year okay or there may be office equipment computer laptop projector and for such better technological asset which method is suitable for such technological assets reducing balance also known as diminishing balance method is suitable okay for technological asset why because better such technological assets lose their value quickly so beta which method charges depreciation quickly uh, it is a reducing balance method because in reducing balance beta we charge more depreciation in the uh, uh, recent years and lesser depreciation in the future years okay so therefore uh, any asset that is technological in nature uh, uh, warrants us to use reducing balance for technological asset and there is one more point which is usually raised by the examiner is repair and maintenance sir what is this repair and maintenance point sir repair and maintenance uh, means repair and maintenance what does this mean uh, this means better if uh, for example there is a new car so if we have bought a new car there would be low repair and maintenance in the uh, earlier years okay so if there is a new car there is no need for uh, repairing and maintenance uh, maintaining it often so if there is low repair and maintenance so we used to charge higher depreciation using reducing sir what happens if the car gets old if the car gets old then repair and maintenance cost tend to increase over time if repair and maintenance cost beta is increasing so our depreciation cost would be decreasing okay so that if one cost is increasing repair and maintenance so the other cost depreciation should decrease or vice versa so this would the uh, this is the point that the examiner uh, <coughs> mentions while using uh, reducing balance method for technology related assets and lastly beta we have another method that is uh, applied on low value assets okay low value assets and normally whenever uh, we use uh, the the topic is single entry or incomplete records in that examiner doesn't mentions that uh, which uh, method to apply if the examiner doesn't mentions the method or rate or life uh, if any such thing is not mentioned then beta we always uh, go for which method 
we always go for a uh, revaluation method okay so example beta which uh, are the low value uh, assets example there can be loose tools okay example there can be loose tools or maybe uh, crates okay uh, cold drink crates uh, and there may be laboratory equipment lab equipment such as a uh, flask and beaker or tubes and all that so for lab equipment wagera we use what we use revaluation re method okay revaluation re method beta is the third method and uh, any asset that does not have depreciation method or rate or life given we always use revaluation re method so let us see beta how do we charge revaluation re depreciation there's a very simple formula for charging depreciation using revaluation re method and for beta small value items we use revaluation re depreciation method and the, there is a simple formula to remember that and the formula is opening plus addition then minus disposal opening plus addition minus disposal and minus closing and to remember that we have made a mnemonic o a d n c and the mnemonic was o and a level from dubai city okay o a d c o and a level from dubai city so opening what does opening means beta opening means the value that we had at start of the year for example beta at the start of the year we have assets worth 1000 sterling okay so beta if the cost is also given uh, for example 1500 at the start of the year and value is already also given that is uh, 1000 so we won't be preferring the cost we would always be preferring the value okay in the valuation method beta we always prefer the value if it's given and if the value is not given then we can go for the cost so opening value is 1000 plus addition for example we have bought new assets worth 500 this year so what about disposal beta the asset that we have disposed of this year for example the cost of the asset that we have disposed of was maybe 300 sterling and the value was how much the value was at 200 and we have sold it for how much we have sold it for maybe 175 so beta which uh, value we will be using we will be using the value okay we would never use the cost here okay we would never use the cost and if the uh, we have only two options that is value and the proceeds that we have received from disposal if the value is not given then we can go for 175 we would assume that this is the value because we have sold the asset for how much 175 but beta if the value is clearly given 200 then we must prefer the value and not the actual amount that we have received on disposal so sir what happens how much value we are left with for example beta at the end of the year we have as assets only 900 dollars left 900 sterling now beta this is uh, how we calculate depreciation using revaluation opening value is how much 1000 addition is 500 it is 1500 minus 200 and minus it's 900 so beta the amount that we are left with is 400 so 400 is basically depreciation for this year using revaluation method so beta if any method is not given in the exam uh, or any rate or life anything is not mentioned normally in uh, uh, single entry incomplete records nothing is given with respect to depreciation so we would always uh, go for this method revaluation method